Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday, October 18th. We are so happy to have you join us as we continue this theme of exploring the miracles of Christ, what it means for us as individuals, but especially what it means for us as a community, a community gathered together by grace and in faith. So again, welcome to worship. There are a host of opportunities for you to engage in the life and ministry of Roseville Lutheran Church. And a couple of opportunities that we have coming up for you include a special Veterans Day service that will air on Veterans Day. And we are asking something from all of you who may be vets out there. If you could please send in your pictures of you in service, we would love to incorporate that into our online worship. And you can um, send those into the church office, you can stop by the church office, or you can email them to pics at roselutheran.org. Again, we'd love to have your involvement as we create this special service to honor all of our veterans. And then we also invite you um, to an All Saints Day candle lighting service. All Saints Day is Sunday, November 1st, and we will be meeting in our south parking lot right off of Roselawn at 6 p.m. We will light candles to remember those who have died before us, to lift up our prayers, and to remember that we are all a part of a community of saints gathered together. So we'd love to have you join us on that Sunday, November 1st at 6 p.m. for our All Saints candle lighting service. And then a little bit nearer to hand, we invite you to um, log in online with us on the Monday before elections. So on Monday, November 2nd, we will be airing a pre-election service of prayers and readings and song. As we as a nation step forward into this election season, we pray together. We ask for hope, we ask for peace, we ask for wisdom and guidance, and we'd love to have you participate also on that day. Again, welcome to worship.
gather together to worship God, who comes to us when we least expect it, who calls us out of the safety of our ordered lives and invites us to join him in the adventure of faith. Let's, let's worship God together. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi, welcome to Storytime. I have my friends here today to help me, and I'm so thankful to be telling a story with kids in the picture. How are you? I hope you're well. Today, we're going to do an experiment. And what each of the kids has two different kinds of, of pieces of paper. One that is float, the other that says sink. And what we're going to do is we're going to test some things to see if, they're gonna, if you think they're going to float or if you think they're going to sink. And you at home could do this at any time too. It's kind of an experiment about water, okay? So first I'm going to take this little rubber duck. Now, hold up, what do you think? Is it going to float or is it going to sink? Everybody says float. Let's try it. Oop, he tipped over, but he floated. All right. Good job. Okay, how about a piece of tin foil? Tin foil, that's a metal. What do you think? Some say sink, some say float. Oh, Finn's undecided. Okay, let's try it. It floated. Okay, here's another trick. Let's try this. How about a wadded up piece of tin foil? What do you think about that one? It has less surface area, so it's probably going to sink. Less surface area, probably going to sink. There, that's very, very good. Let's. It floated. Who knew? I really thought it would sink too. All right, here's one. How about a race car? You think? Race car? I don't know. 007, they, he can float, right? Oh, way to the bottom. Sink. Couple more here. Let's try a couple more. How about, I know, a crayon. Have you ever had crayons in the water before? Some say sink, some say float. Let's try it. I'm just going to drop it and see if that makes any difference. It sunk. Do you know what? Earlier I tried this and I just set it on the water and when I was careful, it floated. Let's try one more. A seashell. When you see seashells in the ocean, are they on top of the water? Uh, everybody's saying sink. If I hold it carefully, I can make it float. But if you just drop it in, right to the bottom. If I drop it, tin foil. We'll try it again. I think gravity helps. Gravity? Let's try. <sighs> Bummer. One more and then we'll get on with our story. What should it be? How about paper clip? A paper clip. A big paper clip. Hmm, what do you think? Float, sink, sink, float. Now again, we'll try it, I'll, I'll be careful, we'll see what happens. Gentle, oh, doesn't matter. It sunk to the bottom. I feel like I'm casting a vote into your <laughs> So, 
Do you guys think you're floaters or sinkers? Hold up your card. What do you think? Have you ever been in swimming lessons? You know when you start out in swimming lessons? When I was about your age or maybe even a little younger, we had swimming lessons in the lake, which I didn't like at all. If you heard my fishing story, that will make more sense. But they, when you're first learning how to swim and they tell you to float on your back, I always sunk. I always sunk. And I was a little bitty thing back then. But then when you learn how to swim, you can lay on your back and you can float, right? I think it's all about relaxing. Do you think? Maybe? Yeah. Or maybe you just feel more comfortable in the water. But are you a sinker or a floater? Let's think about that. I think the Bible can give us some indication about that. Our story today takes place back when Jesus was talking to all the people. And if you remember the story I told a few weeks ago, it was about Jesus talking to the people and a little boy shared his lunch. He shared his lunch and Jesus turned two fish and five loaves into enough food to feed 5,000 people, over 5,000 people. So when that got done and all the people dispersed, Jesus told the disciples, why don't you go and get in your boat and go to the other side of the lake? I'm going to go up to the mountain. I need to talk to God. I need to pray. Jesus loved to talk to God and he prayed often. So he went up the mountain to pray. The disciples went out on the lake in their boat. They were comfortable in their boat, but they got in the middle of the lake and it started getting dark and the waves started getting a little bit higher. There probably maybe was thunder and lightning. There was a storm coming through. And as comfortable as they were on a boat, because some of them were fishermen, they were scared. They thought that that boat, the way it was rocking, might throw them overboard. They might drown. They were really scared. Then they looked out over the lake and they thought they saw something. What was it? Was it a ghost? <gasps> no. It was Jesus. And he was walking on the water. On top of the water. He wasn't swimming. He had his cloak on and he was walking on the water. And Peter, on the boat, said, <gasps> Jesus, if that's really you, Show me how to walk on the water. Help me walk on the water. I want to do it too. Peter always was doing stuff like that. Prove it to me. I can do this too. So Jesus said, come. Come, Peter. Come out on the water. That had to take bravery. He stepped out of the boat onto the lake. And you know what he did? What do you think? Sink or float? Sink or float. He was able to focus on Jesus and walk out onto the lake on top of the water. But then the waves started kind of going a little bit and he started looking around and he started to sink and he said, Jesus, help me, please save me. And Jesus held out his hand and said, come, Peter. And he lifted him out of the water. And he said, Peter, you have little faith. He was able to help Peter walk on the water. So the moral of that story is, is that when he focused on Jesus, when he was looking at Jesus and focused on him, he could do it. His faith saved him. But when he tried to rely on his own ability and kind of got a little nervous about it, he started to sink. So the lesson for us is, we're going to all have storms in our life. We're all, it's not always going to be calm water and beautiful days. Things are going to happen. Things are going to get a little rough in your life, and it's going to be kind of tricky to navigate. But if we focus on God and we have faith that Jesus can help us through the rough times as well as the good times, you'll get through it. But if we try to rely on our own ability and our own will, it might not go so well. We need Jesus' help. We need to focus on God and let our faith make us strong. 
That's the end of the story. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your son Jesus and thank you for the ability to focus on him and have you and Jesus help us through the storms of life. Help us to remember that, that by focusing on you, we can be strong and courageous, patient and calm. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson today comes from Matthew, the 14th chapter. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came down, walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come towards you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Have you ever had an experience in which you have been absolutely paralyzed by fear. I know for me, it startled me in many ways when I discovered out of the blue that I was afraid of heights. As a young girl, I had never been afraid of heights. I could dive off the high board, I could go up trees. It didn't matter, ladders, whatever. Somewhere in those years in between being quite young and how old I am now, I've gotten into this fear of heights. And I remember the first time I really experienced it. My kids were younger and we were in Chicago and we went up to the Sears Tower, now called the Willis Tower. And as my kids ran to the edge where there is that glass floor so that you can really fully feel the height that you are above, I just panicked. I could not set one foot on top of that glass floor. It was that fear that just encapsulated me. It paralyzed me and I stood as close to the inner wall as I possibly could the entire time my kids were exploring this tremendous height. There's a story of a man who fell off a cliff. And as he's falling off of this cliff, he catches a tree root on the way down. And as he's clinging on to his life, as he's as on the side of that cliff, he starts to pray for help. And he calls out and he calls out to anybody. He says, is anybody up there? Help me. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this calling out, a voice from heaven, the voice of God comes down to him. And the voice says to him, trust in me, do not be afraid. All you need to do is let go. Well, a man on the cliff is holding onto this tree root and he's thinking, let go, no way. I am not going to listen to you. I am not going to let go. 
He starts to argue and bicker with this voice of God. And again, God calls down, trust in me, do not be afraid. All you need to do is let go. To which the man is silent for a little bit and then he calls out, is there anyone else up there? We've all been in these situations, maybe not, of course, hanging off of a cliff, or maybe your fear isn't one exactly of heights, but where we find ourselves in situations where we don't quite know how we ourselves are gonna get out of them, or in a situation in which fear has so transformed us that we are stopped in our tracks. The disciples in today's text have a fear that has paralyzed them. They're not hanging off a cliff, of course, but they are in a very perilous situation. They had set out in their fishing boat across the Sea of Galilee. They needed some R&R, some rest and relaxation. And as they are making their way across the Sea of Galilee, all of a sudden a raging storm comes up. Some of them are professional fishermen and they realize right away that they are in trouble. They're a considerable distance away from land and they're being buffeted by these waves. They are terrified. But then something quite extraordinary happens to them as they're out there on that water. They see a figure coming to them across the stormy waves. And at first they call out, it has to be a ghost and their fear was only encouraged and made greater. But then Jesus calls to them and says, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter, that one disciple who I think is so real in his responses, challenges this voice of Jesus and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you out on the water. I would imagine the other disciples thought that this was a pretty foolish game that Peter was deciding to play. But Peter then does step out. He steps out into that stormy, raging sea. His eyes are on Christ, but then there is this paralyzing fear that happens, mid-stride almost, where all of a sudden this fear overtakes him and he begins to sink. In our text from today, Jesus reaches out his hand in comfort and in blessing and support and strength. And he says to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? These questions, this declaration of you of little faith, why did you doubt? Of course, it's it's focused at Peter. It's also focused to the disciples who doubted possibilities of their safety out there on the waves. But these words are also spoken to us when we feel paralyzed or uncertain. Maybe there's a fear of the unknown that has kept us in its grasp. Christ's words are also for us saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be of little faith. Fear is an overwhelming emotion. It can only paralyze us, it can set our hearts racing, it can cause our faces to blush. But there's so much more about fear because fear, when we let it take control of our lives, it can defeat us and paralyze us. It is fear sometimes that causes us not to take the action and the change that we need and we find ourselves living a life in which we are unhappy or dissatisfied with ourselves or others, unable, too fearful to make a step into meaningful change. Fear can also haunt our relationships. The fear of maybe being pushed back or the fear of the memory of a conversation that did not go so well. That same sort of fear can stifle us in our growth, can stifle us in the ways in which we can live richly and love largely with each other. Because fear not only blinds us to all of the possibilities that may be out there for us, but it also binds us 
to an old way of life. There's this great historical illustration that comes from the turn of the 19th century. Some of you have, may have heard of this fantastic tightrope walker. His name is Charles Blondin. And at the turn of the 19th century, Blondin was all over the, the newspapers of the day. He was a daredevil of sorts. And one of his most amazing feats was tightrope walking across Niagara Falls. Have you been to Niagara Falls? I'm afraid of heights. I could no way even get up at the heights that he was at. Charles Wandine was about 60 feet in the air and he had a tightrope walk of about three football fields in length. Charles Blondine not only walked the tightrope, Charles Blondine also did some other crazy stunts on that same tightrope. Not only did he walk it, he also performed his tightrope walk completely blindfolded. He also crossed the tightrope in a sack. He did it on stilts. He carried his manager one time over on his back as well. And then there's this great photo of him sitting there midway across this tightrope, hanging out over Niagara Falls, fixing an omelet and his breakfast. There's also one time when Charles Blondin pushed a wheelbarrow across the tightrope. And he gets to the other side and the crowd is cheering and he says to them, how many of you believe that I could do that again? And the crowd goes wild, crazy, just loving this crazy act that they're seeing in front of them. And then he asked this crowd that's roaring, how many of you believe that I could cross this tightrope with a person in the wheelbarrow? And the crowd just goes wild. They're, they're saying, yes, of course you could. We've seen you do all of these other things. And so before the roar even gets down, Charles Blondine then asks, so do I have a volunteer? Complete silence. I use this illustration because so often that's who we are when we speak about our faith in Christ. We are there saying, yes, Christ, I believe in you. Yes, I'll, I'll go anywhere with you. But yet, when it's actually being asked of us, we are too fearful to move, too afraid to either, in this illustration, get into the wheelbarrow, but in Peter's situation, to get out of the boat to be where Christ, where Christ is leading us, even in the stormy waters and the seas. Because if our faith tells us one thing, that is where Christ even draws us nearer. We as a community of faith proclaim and live out this calling that we trust in Christ our Lord. But so many times in our walk of faith, we just stay in the boat we stay in the boat too fearful to make any moves. As a pastor, I know that there are seven words that are always spoken in churches throughout the nations. And these seven words are this, we've never done it like that before. Often when I hear those words, I hear some fear about the uncertainty, the change, or, or maybe kind of even living into a different future. But think about this. Water had never, ever been turned into wine before. A paralytic, healed, sins forgiven, that had never been done before. The miracle of the five loaves and two fish, never done before. And here we have Peter walking on water, never done before. We are called to walk with Christ, to let Christ lead us, not only as individuals, but as a community of families, a community gathered together, united by grace. We are called to step out into those waters, to be with each other, to hear Christ's voice as Christ says to each and every one of us, do not be afraid, for I am here. 
Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we come before you on this day, confessing that we do not always understand your ways. It is so easy to become easily distracted when life takes unexpected turns and our carefully laid out plans and dreams come to nothing. We confess that we are quick to give up when things get difficult and quick to question your presence and your power in our life. Forgive us. Grant us patience to wait for you. Open our eyes to recognize you walking among us. Open our ears to hear you call us by name. And then give us courage to step out in faith and obedience, trusting in you to lead us and guide us. You call us to let go of the things we cling to and step out in faith, trusting in your love and provision. Give us courage to step out boldly and sufficient faith to follow without fear. Take our lives and our gifts. Use them to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine so that through us, your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we approach the time of elections as a nation, support us and encourage us to remain steadfast to your word. Let us not be divided by disagreement, rather united by hope, love, and grace. May we not be divided by the things that we think separate us, but united as your people. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Jesus calls us to step out onto the water with him, to leave the safety of our boats, and to walk towards him in faith, joining him in the work he is already doing in, the, in our world. And when the wind and waves get high and threaten to overwhelm us, we remember his words, don't be afraid, take courage, I am here. So let's go with faith to follow where Jesus leads, confident that his love and presence will go with us. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.